All right, guys, there it is. All the hangers are in. All the way down here. And that's a wrap. Back in the master bathroom, still working on the shower. Got the niche framed in and fixed up. You guys can check out those videos if you're interested. Today, we are gonna be working on this beam here. Um, about a year ago when I first started working on this, I put in this beam um, and I've decided I wanna make it a recessed beam so it's not exposed. This is, a, of course, a load-bearing wall. So I'm gonna show you guys the basic steps on how to get that done. If obviously you don't have the beam in place, it will be the same steps. You just have to lift the beam up higher. For me, I've already got it up there, so I've just got to move it up another 10 inches or so. So with anything structural like this, you need to keep in mind that that beam is carrying load from above. In my case though, it's only carrying the load from the ceiling joists. There's nothing from the roof rafters coming down. Okay, so we are up here in the attic. Don't mind the messy wires and the plumbing. Everything's kind of loose so that I have space to bring the beam up underneath. But I'll get it all tied down and fixed once the beam is done. So just to orient you, here's the beam right here. So what I've done is I have gone through all of these rafters and what you can see, um, this is a telltale sign for a load bearing wall is when they have the ceiling rafters come and overlap together and finish right on top of a wall. So what I've done, you know, we've got uh, maybe seven or eight total rafters that we've got to get through. So I've marked on each one a line straight down, giving myself about an eighth of an inch on either side. So what, you, what I've done is I marked here across the top and on the other side as well. So I can bring my circular saw up here. I'm gonna cut as deep as that blade will go here and here. And then I'll use my sawzall to finish it out all the way down. And so as you can imagine, that's gonna take a chunk out. All you're gonna be left with is this rafter finishing here and this rafter finishing here. And then the beam can slide right up in between them. Okay, so I've got everything kind of cleaned up up here, out of the way. Uh, a couple more steps I need to do before I can move the beam up. Well, before I can cut the joists, first what I need to do is cut the drywall here. So I have some access to this side, uh, specifically to put the joist hangers in and connect them to the beam. So that's what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna cut the drywall. Let me show you how to set the depth on the saw so you can cut just the drywall and not the studs. Hey guys, I just want to show you one quick trick for cutting the drywall like I'm going to do here on the ceiling. Um, I think a common mistake people will make is they'll try to cut the drywall and they'll end up cutting the studs as well. So what you can do, we know I have half inch drywall on the ceiling. So you bring up, you loosen up the, uh, the adjuster for the plate. Bring up your guard and set your saw down, and then just let the blade sit down on top of the stud, right there. And then you just tighten up that adjuster, and boom, your saw is adjusted for the exact depth that you, that you need. It may barely score the two by fours, but it won't cut into them. So that's how you adjust your saw to cut just the drywall, but not the two by four holding it on. Okay, so the drywall is out of the way. Next step is going to be building this temporary wall. I've got the top plate in. Just gotta 
put a couple bottom plates I might add two top plates and then a couple studs all right guys here we go so I had to do actually a triple bottom plate and a double top plate just so I could have enough uh, less space than a, the distance of the stud so I could wedge them in there. That's what you want is you want them wedged in there so they have some tension on them pushing and holding the ceiling up. Okay, so got our temporary wall. Got both sides of the beam exposed. Again, if you don't have the beam up there already, like I'm assuming most people wouldn't, then you'll just have these rafters exposed. You you would definitely want to put a wall on this side. In my case, I have this wall that I built here already that's supporting these rafters, so those should be just fine. And what you what you would do is you want to cut a slot for that beam to fit up into. So as you could see previously, I already took some time with my skill saw to run over the tops of all these joists. And I'm going to finish that cut all the way down with the, the Sawzall. Um, it's even easier though, if you don't have the beam up, you just take your skill saw and run it right up the side of each rafter. And it should cut right through them. And do that on this side as well. So you're going to have this rafter cut here, this rafter cut here, and the same on all of them. And that's going to leave a gap about the width of the beam. I left myself about an eighth of an inch on each side because I really don't want to get up there and have the beam too tight and have to really fight it to get in. And with the hangers I'm using, an eighth of an inch is the uh, maximum allowable uh, gap that you can have with those. So yeah, I'm going to finish cutting off these, these rafters here. I don't know if I'll record it. I don't know how good the video can be or what angle I would use. We'll see. Okay, so quick update. I decided to sure up both sides. So I just threw up another temporary wall here on the left side. So now both sides are supported. Okay, let's start cutting those rafters. Okay, all the rafters are cut on this side, there, and then on this side as well, all the way down. Okay, so this will be the hard part. I need to get the beam up another, I think nine and a quarter inches. I've cut these little blocks the spacers they're the exact height of the beam so they will fit right in under the beam to hold it and I have four of them so two for each side so I think my plan is to use some of the two by fours I have and prop it up under this side and then wedge it in to lift it up 
and hopefully that will get it up enough where I can get up on the ladder and use my shoulder to get the rest of the way. Then I can put my little spacer in. Then I'll come over to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so I just used the 2x4 to wedge up the beam. You can see it got up there maybe about seven inches. So we got about three and a half to go, or three to go. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. Down here, you can see I kind of secured it a little better. I added in two temporary blocks underneath this end. Because it's not secured over here, I figured it would start pulling apart. I didn't want it to fall off. So there's, two extra pieces here and then I put a piece on the side to hold it in temporarily as well. So I'm going to come down to this end and do the same thing with the 2x4. Yeah, that one was easier and I just wedged the, I stuck the 2x4 in so it's holding it up. Um, I'm gonna put in my spacers. I cut a little six inch spacer, but I'll pull that out and I'll put in my nine and a half inch spacers. And then I'm gonna do the other side and we'll go from there. Okay, that one is in. The height looks pretty good. What we're looking for is these rafters to be flush with the bottom of the beam. And that's what we got almost all the way down. Okay, so the next step is to get the hangers on. Every joist is gonna be connected by a hanger to the beam. Okay, so you can see with these hangers, they have one hole, two, three, four, and the same thing on the opposite side. So what I'm gonna I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these smaller nails to go into these holes, and then I'm gonna use the longer nails right here to go which will angle in through the beam, through the joist into the beam. Okay, so you can kind of see how that works. Um, what I'm using there is called a palm nailer. It's really helpful for tight spaces like this um, where you can't really swing a hammer. You just hold the pressure and, and it has a pneumatic hammer inside that, that pushes the nail in. Really helpful. So I'm gonna do the same thing all the way down and then back on this side as well. And then we should be good to take out our temporary walls.
Alright guys, so we got all but one. I gotta cut that drywall out so I can get that one in. Two and three. These two here were the joists are sitting a little high. So I'm gonna wait till I pull out the temporary walls and hopefully it will sit down. Um, because let me show you up here. What you want is the hangers to be really flush with the bottom of the joy of the beam so that when you lay your drywall there's um there's no bump in the drywall so you don't have to float that bump out so the the more flush you lay these hangers the easier the drywall will be okay so the next step I'm gonna take out the temporary walls and then get those last hangers in and then we are done all right guys, there it is. All the hangers are in. All the way down here. And that's a wrap. So just as a recap, you need to sure up the joists on either side of the beam. Then you can cut the rafters to the width of the beam or just a tad bit bigger so the beam will fit up in there. And then you put your hangers on, so your rafters attach to the beam structurally. And then you can take down your temporary wall. It's really not that complicated. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. And until the next video, I'll see you guys then.